Hi, I'm Sam Ben Yaakov. This is a short presentation trying to demystify the issue of losses in switched capacitor converters. What are these type of converters? We recognize two types of switching converters, or power supply, you might say. One is the switched inductor converter. In this case, we have an input voltage, which is charging an inductor, and then when the switches change position, this energy stored in the inductor goes out to the output. So the inductor is charging and discharging. As it turns out, this is a lossless process. I mean, inherently a lossless process, although there are some losses involved because the current is passing through the inductor. It has some resistance. So of course, there are some parasitic losses. However, inherently, this or theoretically, this is a lossless process. On the other hand, if we use a switched capacitor, these are the switched capacitor converters, and say we charge the capacitor to the input, and then with the other position of the switches, we connect this capacitor in parallel to the output. In this case, we have a process of charging and discharging a capacitor. And as it turns out, this is a lossy process, and this is the subject matter uh, we are going to discuss here. In this particular case, this is going to be a, a unity converter, that is the output voltage will, in the steady state, will be equal to the input voltage, because we are charging the capacitor to the input and then discharging it to the output. However, there is a phase reversal here, so in this case, the polarity is going to be inverted as compared to the input. So this will be a unity inverter. Now, if the switched capacitors converters have losses, why is it that we are using them? Well, they have some advantages. They have no magnetic elements, and this is neat because sometimes we like to um, abstain from using uh, inductors. And since they don't have these magnetic elements, uh, the interference, this is the radiation, electromagnetic radiation, is generally lower. Another feature is that they can be fabricated as an IC, all the components inside, and uh, sometimes the capacitor will be outside. This is a neat feature that will make them very small, and this is why they are used in some uh, handheld um, equipment. Now, the disadvantages, as we have said, is that they have an inherent power loss, which we are going to discuss now in detail, and in some cases, they have a relatively large number of switches. Now, if the power level is low, then there is no big problem, but if the power level is high, then these um, extra number of switches uh, will cause uh, losses because of the internal resistance uh, of the switches. Now let's see how switch capacitor converters work and let's take an, an example, a doubler. That is a case in which the output will approach twice the input voltage. This is the input voltage and in one state of the switching phase, these switches are closed, so we are charging the capacitor uh, by the input. At the second phase, these switches are closed and as you can see now, we're actually adding the voltage of the capacitor to the input so that the output voltage uh, will receive now a voltage which is twice that voltage. So that VPP is VC1 plus VDD and VC1 is VDD. So the output voltage is going to be twice the input voltage. So this is a doubler. Another example is a an inverter which produces half the input voltage. In one phase, when these switches are closed, we are connecting this capacitor in series with the input. And uh, let's assume that this is the polarity of the charge, and then we're go go going to have that the output voltage is VDD minus VC1. Now, the second stage of the switching cycle, we're going to connect this switch and this switch. And as you can see, uh, 
C1 is being put in parallel to the output voltage, so Vc1 becomes equal to V out. So we have V out is VDD minus now uh, V out, or twice V out equal to VDD, or V out is VDD half. So this will be a output which is half the input voltage. Same way, using more capacitor or less capacitors, um, and of course we need quite a number of switches, we can produce different ratio between input and output, a quarter, three quarter, this is this case, and many other, you can work out yourself the relationship, and many other cases uh, we can get various output voltages. Now what about the losses? In physics book, you'll find this type of anal analysis. We start with two capacitors, which are charged to different voltages, V1 and V2. Now going back to the basics of physics, energy stored in a capacitor is Cv squared over two, or Q squared, this is the charge, times two C. Now, at the beginning, the energy stored in the system is uh, C1 V1 squared over 2 plus the energy of the second capacitor. This is the initial energy. Once the switch is closed and the voltages are equal, then uh, we're going to have the final energy, which now is expressed as Q. This is the total chart. Charge is C times V plus C2 times V2. This is the second charge, so these are the total charge squared over 2C. This is this equation here. And when we subtract the initial energy from the final one, this is what we get. It turns out that power was lost. Why is that? Well, the reason is that as we connected C1 to, to C2, and there is some resistance in this uh, line, the current will flow in sort of a exponential way. And this current, this is current, and this is time, passing through this resistor will cause energy loss. Now, what if we make this resistor smaller? Well, it doesn't help. Because if the resistor is smaller, then the current will start to be at much larger value. And as it turns out, the energy loss, and this is what this equation actually shows, will be the same. It will be a larger value for a shorter time because it's a smaller resistor, so the time constant is shorter. So... What happens in a real converter? Well, if we look at the converter, which is divided by two, and remember that, say, in this uh, phase shown here, we actually are passing current through this capacitor. Now, obviously, the capacitor will, be, will get charged or discharged. And consequently, when next time we're going to operate these two switches, the difference between the voltage across the capacitor and the output voltage will be large as this capacitor is smaller or the time of the switching is larger, that is lower switching frequency. So as you can see, if we operate the converter at low frequency or with small capacitors, we should expect to have a larger delta V, this is the ripple, and consequently will have larger uh, losses. The situation is a little bit more complex than is given in this physics book. Basically what we have is a voltage source or a capacitor charged with a given voltage, at a given voltage, and then the switch is closed and we have now current through an RC circuit. Now, the switch is closed for a certain given time. We call it T on. This is the time the switch is closed. 
following this time, there is another time slot in which the other switches operate. Let's concentrate on this time now. Now there are two possibilities. One is that the RC time constant is much shorter than T on. This is this case that we have discussed earlier. So if the time constant is short, then this process will end during this time. This is now the T on that I've mentioned. If, however, RC is comparable to T on, or say even much larger, this is the picture we're going to have. Now we assume, of course, that we are passing the same amount of current, or you might say the charge per switching phase is the same. Now, as it turns out, the RMS value of this current here is larger than the RMS value of this current here. So consequently, in this case, there will be higher losses. In this case, there will be lower losses. So we understand now that if we are capable of running the, uh, the switch capacitor converter at high frequencies with very short T on, we should expect lower losses. Now, as we increase the frequency or increase the size of the capacitor, that's the same thing, we are going to have waveform eventually something like this. This would be the lowest possible losses in, this, in a system like that. Now, as it turns out, we can describe the switch capacitor converter as a voltage source with an internal resistance. This voltage source is called the target voltage. This is the voltage that we will find with no load or with uh, a load resistance which is very high, no current, no output current. In this case, uh, we are going to see at this output terminal this voltage. This is the theoretical conversion ratio we talked about earlier. For example, in the case of twice V in, in a doubler, this would be this voltage here. However, as we load the system, make the load resistance smaller and smaller, current is passing, there is a voltage drop on this internal resistance, and consequently, the voltage that we'll see at the output will be lower and lower, and of course, the losses will be larger because uh, we are losing some power uh, in this internal resistance. Now, as it turns out, there is a way to analyze and express this equivalent resistance in some mathematical way. And the expression that we get is of this form. Now, what we see here is a parameter theta in which we have the time constant, the switching frequency, and then there is some coefficient here which is a relating the output current to the current passing through this capacitor in the cases I've meant I've shown earlier, this k is equal to 1. Now what do we see when we plot this expression here as a function of the switching frequency, leaving everything else constant, just a function of this thing? As you can see, as the frequency goes higher and higher, this is the form of the current, and we actually we have here a limiting value uh, which is, in this particular case, 4, and this is in units of the switch resistance. So this would be 4 times the switch resistance. However, as the frequency goes down, or it will be equivalent if the capacitor becomes smaller and smaller, then we are going to move to this waveform, and the losses are going to jump high, going to be larger and larger, as we have discussed before. So this is the explanation of the losses as a function of the ripple, which is now uh, dependent, of course, on the switching frequency and the uh, time constant. Now, up to now, we talked about switch capacitor converters in open loop. Now, what happens if we want to regulate the output voltage? Well, the only way to do it in switch capacitor converters, once the target voltage is fixed, 
The only way to do it is to actually insert some resistance to increase the losses or the internal resistance. As it turns out, the efficiency is calculated as V out over target voltage. And it is, of course, dependent on this resistance that one has to increase if he wants or change if he wants to regulate the output. So when the system is running at open loop, RE is the smallest possible value, and this is the one we have calculated before, but if, say for example, you like to keep the voltage to be 5 volt, while the input is changing to higher and higher voltages, then you do have to increase R sub E so as to attenuate the voltage, and consequently you get, first of all, the desired output voltage, but at the expense of efficiency. The issue of uh, losses in switch capacitor converters is discussed in this paper here, and you can download it from uh, this um, uh, URL. Um, in the description below the window that you are now looking at YouTube, there is a link that you can just click on it and it'll bring you to uh, this site. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope you have found this presentation useful.